that. Welcome to my video on Gini coefficient, an essential concept in economics. Today, we will dive into what the Gini coefficient is and why it's important. The Gini index or the Gini coefficient measures income distribution across a population. Developed by Italian statistician Corrado Gini in 1912, it often serves as a gauge of economic inequality, measuring income distribution or less commonly, commonly wealth distribution amongst a population. The Gini coefficient ranges from 0 to 1, with 0 representing perfect equality and 1 representing perfect inequality. Values greater than 1 are theoretically possible due to negative income or wealth. The Gini index is a measure of distribution of income across a population. A higher Gini index indicates greater inequality with high income individuals receiving much larger percentages of the population's total income. Global inequality as measured by the Gini index has steadily increased over the past few centuries and spiked during the COVID-19 pandemic. Because of the data and other limitations, the Gini index may overstate income inequality and can obscure important information about income distribution. Understanding the Gini index A country in which every resident has the same income would have an income Gini coefficient of zero. Conversely, a country in which one resident earned all the income while everyone else earned nothing would have, an, uh, would have a Gini in coefficient of 1. In order to calculate the Gini coefficient, we need to plot the cumulative percentage of income received against the cumulative percentage of the population. The area between the line of perfect equality and the actual distribution curve represents the inequality within the society. Now, the formula for the Gini coefficient is relatively simple. It's the ratio of the area between the Lorentz curve, which is the actual distribution curve, and the line of perfect equality to the total area under the line of perfect equality. So, what do different Gini coefficients tell us? A low Gini coefficient indicates a more equal distribution of income or wealth, suggesting a fairer society with fewer disparities. Consecutively, a high Gini coefficient suggests greater inequality with a larger proportion of income or wealth concentrated amongst a smaller percentage of the population. For example, Nordic countries like Sweden and Denmark typically have lower Gini coefficients, indicating a more equal distribution of wealth. On the other hand, countries like Brazil and South Africa tend to have a higher Gini coefficient, indicating greater inequality income. In summary, the Gini coefficient is a valuable tool for economists and policymakers to measure and understand income or wealth inequality within a society. By analyzing the Gini coefficient, we can identify areas where inequality is most prevalent and develop policies to address these disparities, ultimately striving for a more equitable society. The same analysis can apply to wealth distribution as well, but because wealth is more difficult to measure than income, Gini coefficients usually refer to income and appear simply as the Gini coefficient or the Gini index without specifying that they refer to income. Wealth Gini coefficients tend to be much higher than those for income. Even in affluent countries, the Gini index measures net income rather than net worth. So, majority of a nation's wealth can be concentrated in the hands of a small number of people even if e income distribution is relatively equal. Thanks for watching. I hope you now have a better understanding of the Gini coefficients and its significance in economics.